After opening game loss to Duke, Kentucky has been rolling as its number 10 catch hosts UNCG. That doesn't make it any less stressful for John Calipari. Is there ever going to be an easy year for me? Like just one year be a team that I can just sit there and like rot. I mean, every year is a grind and sometimes I forget. And it doesn't get any easier for Kentucky today. Francis Alonzo of UNCG is one of the top scorers in the game. Welcome courtside, Tom Hart, Jimmy Dykes. What are the Spartans going to do with him? Well, you have to have a dude to pull off an upset, and UNCG is capable of doing it. This feels like a 4 versus 13 matchup. UNCG is going to throw a ton of three high looks offensively for Kentucky. It all starts with number 10, Francis Alonzo, Tommy. He's going to run off these baseline screens multiple times. He makes violent cuts. He is terrific at reading those screens. Interesting, Kentucky. Kentucky, very similar offense. They call it circle. They practice against it every day, but it's going to be tested to a whole nother level today. This kid can really play. It should be a great one. UNCG has a chance for the biggest win in their school history. This is after they won at NC State last year and went to the NCAA tournament where they nearly knocked off Gonzaga. So West Miller squad has an upset on their mind today. Meanwhile, Kentucky is trying to keep it rolling after they knocked off Monmouth. 90 to 44 last time out. You thought that was a blowout? UNCG won their game by 78. Biggins, 111 to 33 what? against who did they play? Gre Greensboro College, <laughs> non-scholarship, but uh, they had a great night shooting the ball. Here's Alonzo running off that action you talked about, and he will get into the paint and scoop it home. He is a mid-major monster operating off those baseline screens, and he's more than just a shooter. He's a crafty playmaker. Kentucky's going to have to be dialed in and make sure they have the right guy checking number 10 the entire ball game. And UNCG will frustrate with their 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court press, making Kentucky work. And already the shot clock down to 14 before they get into their set. Here's Tyler Hero. Shot clock's at 8. P.J. Washington with the ball sticking to him. Emmanuel kick quickly will throw up a rush 2. And they got going really late in that possession. Did the ball ever touch the paint for Kentucky? No. Alonzo's got another five quick ones for the leading score. 19 points a game. Tommy, the kid's lethal. 46% from the three-point line. He shoots a perfect ball every time. Hard to guard, 10 in blue. This is a Spartan team that will not be intimidated coming into Rupp Arena. They've got plenty of big game experience. Reed Travis gets a touch. It's ripped away by James Dickey, last year's SoCon Defensive Player of the Year. Well, Kentucky's transition defense has to pick up a step or two higher than normal, especially against Alonzo. He is a lethal transition pull-up deep guy. Dickey working on Travis, the first miss for the Spartans, and the first time Kentucky does not have to face the press. Tyler Hero will let it fly. And we got a hold inside on James Dickey. Come on, go back to the first set by Francis Alonzo. This is the three high offense. He went to one side and came back and worked the other, but then you, you rush at him and take away his three ball. He's going to get the ball to the painted part of the floor with crafty floaters and finishers. And you break down his shot attempts on the year. He is very good off of screens and in transition. Those are the heavy numbers where he takes his shots from. Kentucky coming off of a 90 to 44 win. Their offense was clicking last time out and Kelvin Johnson drains a corner triple. Kentucky hit a season high 10 threes against Monmouth. They never trailed in that game midweek. Alonzo was looking inside and Tyler Hero with the hold. So Wes Miller played at North Carolina. He played in this building back in 2005, came off the bench for Roy Williams, hit a couple of threes, had 12 points in that win. It's North Carolina coming off the national championship was unranked and beat a then number 10 Kentucky team. I thought it was interesting when I asked him, where did you come up with your three high offense? He said, I, I fought back to my days as a player chasing J.J. Reddick from Duke along those baseline screens constantly. I got a shooter like Alonzo. Why not? Calvin Johnson hangs. Reed Travis. Wow, that would have been a powerful follow. Kentucky with the offensive board. And there's Travis again, and he gets fouled on his way up. Kentucky can punish you, and that ball's above the rim. The best offensive rebound team in the nation right now, grabbing 46% on the offensive glass. 
That's almost an unrealistic high number for them to continue on the year. And the visitors have to make sure that their second shot defense is dialed in today. So Reed Travis, a transfer from Stanford at the free throw line. And he's got another one coming his way. Tom, as good of a start that Reed Travis has, he's shooting 62% from the floor, 13 and a half points a game. He does struggle with length. He struggles scoring over the top of tall defenders. And UNCG has a couple of guys that he's going to have to make sure he gets angles on today. Including Kieran Calloway and James Dickey, 6'8 and 6'10. They'll bring a seven-footer off the bench. There's the three-high look again. Look where number 10 is. He's just going to work all those baseline screens, and he understands how to come off of it in different speeds. They switch, and Hero ends up guarding Galloway inside. Push back, step back. Yeah. Alonzo drills it. He can do that. He's got eight. Good luck. I mean, again, he's going to do that four or five times a game where he gets just enough contact to knock that defender back, then he steps back for the clean look. Hero drifted, and it went off of UNCG. So we have an idea of how Kentucky's going to defend that now. Well, yes, so they, they to, to start with, and that's the adjustment you have to make. You're, you're switching out, and if you do that, you can ultimately you know, get in a mismatch. But that's the craftiness I'm talking about with this kid. Just enough contact to knock you off balance. A ton of experience overseas playing with his Spain uh, FIBA team. He is much more than a shooter. From Malaga, Spain. Travis, great look inside, P.J. Washington. It all started, though, with Travis's ability to take one bounce out of the double and find the rim run right in front. The UNC defense did not protect the front of the rim. That was the message from John Calipari to his guys yesterday. If your man doubles, run to the ball and you'll be open. Alonzo working on Reed Travis this time. A high arcing shot. This guy is incredible. He's got all 11 early for UNCG. He has yet to miss. Who did we talk about in the open? Number 10 in blue. That's a mismatch every time that they're going to take advantage of when Kentucky switches a big out on number 10. Loose ball. Keldon Johnson finds it. Nice pass. Travis point blank range. To me, Keldon Johnson is the one guy that I know is going to play with a dog-eat-dog -dog mentality when he steps on the floor. He's the only one that right now that when I watch Kentucky play that I know is going to bring that with him. Dump pass inside, and somebody other than Alonzo gets a bucket. Eric Hamilton, the transfer from Wichita State. Again, the 1-2-2. Two, two. For three years, this has been UNCG's DNA. After a score, they're going to put that three-quarter court press on you, and you have to convert. Tom, think about this. Kentucky on the year. They have only had eight times to score in their, in their press offense. They're untested in this area. They have to be good right now on the fly. Already once this year, Kentucky has had their hands full with a SoCon shooter. Bubba Parham hit 10 threes against him for BMI. And Francis Alonzo off to a hot start for the Spartans. Francis Alonzo is getting off to a hot start. Tommy's a kid that, uh, again, he just knows how to get baskets. That international experience, he's a, he's a point guard when he plays overseas, but he is a lethal shooting guard at the mid-major level. They can get separation against anybody, and this is what I'm talking about. If Kentucky's going to start switching the action on those baseline screens, it's just a matter until you get to that second or third screen that this kid is, it, has a mismatch. He's going to take advantage every single time that Kentucky tries to use a five defensively guarding him. Just mark it down. Francis Alonzo hit 111 threes last year. That was a school record for a single season. Second consecutive season, he matched the school record or bettered it. Interesting that they sit him down with a hot start, probably just for a minute because I think he's in great shape. The, the, the ball late in close games with this kid still is a very high release, very soft shot. I think he's in terrific condition working off those screens. So where do the Spartans go for offense now? Uh, Dickey can score a little bit. I would like Galloway on the floor as a three-point shooter. This kid can go, can go get his own, Miller. Isaiah Miller with the floater. B.J. Washington picks up the foul. Championship Saturday rolls on today on ABC 330 Eastern. Memphis takes on UCF for the American title. Then at 8 p.m., Clemson battles with Pitt in the ACC for a spot in the college football playoff. 
can always watch it live on the ESPN app. Last time Pitt met Clemson, they beat them. Won at Clemson in the 2016 season. Tigers went on to win the national title. Pretty big football game in the SEC this afternoon, right? Indeed. The same in basketball is the same in football. Make it very simple for you. How good is the guy with the ball? Alabama's guy with the ball, too, is pretty good. Maybe the best. Nobody picks up Hagen. Tried to force it to Johnson. Here's P.J. Washington. Tried to get it to Reed Travis. He finds it anyway, and in traffic, he's got eight. It's a good job by Washington not to shoot a bad pass. You know, he was thrown at his ankles, so he turned it down and got a hard drive and at least got the ball around the rim, and now UNCG's in trouble in transition. Hagen started it with a tip from behind, and Keldon Johnson will go to the free throw line. That is the second now on James Dickey. He is their rim protector. He is their best defensive player, and this is what Wes Miller was afraid of, that one of his bigs would get in early foul trouble. You cannot, you cannot turn the ball over in this building if you're the Spartans. If not, you'll end up with jet lag in terms of how fast the Kentucky's going to continue to come at you. Kentucky's so good right now, Tom, getting that free throw line 31 times a game. Mm -hmm. And again, they're number one in the nation, plus 17 on the boards. They're going to rip and run, so you can't give them extra ones by turning that thing over. So Dickey has to come out of the game. Alonzo is still on the bench for the moment. No foul trouble for Alonzo. Johnson misses both. Isaiah Miller working on Reed Travis. Mismatch here. The defense by Travis. Miller coughs it up. And now Ashton Hagen's leading the break. Quade Green. Green had a big night shooting against Monmouth. And Kentucky gives it right back. You cannot make a two-hand chest pass across two defenders. That ball has to be released up high, if anything. At the bottom line, don't throw the dadgum ball. Troy has it blocked by Washington. Ball never hit the rim. No, they gave him a fresh 30 for some reason. Brian Shea will stop it and will say baseline out of bounds and they'll look at the shot clock. Thomas not breaking news. Kentucky defensively is not good so far this season. They are 332 out of 353 in Division I defending the three-point shot. But it all starts, I'm telling you, it all starts with Kentucky's inability to just guard the basketball. They're undisciplined in their closeouts. They're not consistent in where they're funneling the ball. And John Calipari told us yesterday, every single day from now on, they're going to do this every day in practice. If they can't guard the ball, that three-point percentage for the opponent is going to continue to be at a really high level. Opponents are making nine threes a game. VMI made a Rupp Arena record for an opponent in here with their threes, including 10 from one player. Emmanuel quickly picks up the foul. But was above a par. Above a par, yes. Yeah. He did the game. Hit 19 threes that day. But go back and watch it. It was it was putting Kentucky in a defensive rotation, and guys were wide open. Beautiful pass from Alonzo started that, but UNCG couldn't take advantage. Kentucky has yet to lead today. Cal wants his elbow series, but Reed Travis is the only guy that saw it. So now they just have to. There they get the elbow going. Jumper off the mark from E.J. Montgomery, the freshman southpaw, and Kentucky still has yet to lead in this thing. Alonzo lurking in the far corner, top of your screen. Hero chasing. Knifes his way oh, yeah. in and dishes it off. Beautiful pass to Eric Hamilton. How smooth is this kid? Not only as a shooter, but just making plays. Kentucky cannot speed him up. He's going to play to the speed that he wants to play to. Offensive foul, and it'll be a Kentucky turnover. When I watch Francis Alonzo, to me, he is the Kyle guy or the Ty Jerome of the Southern Conference. He is phenomenal at reading screens. He's phenomenal at knocking down open looks, and he is terrific in terms of a feel around the rim. His rim decisions probably grayed out for their coaching staff about 90%, Tom, and that's a high number. Wow, 
Isaiah Miller got to the rim. This is a UNCG team that almost won at LSU earlier this season. Miller hit a couple key threes in that one. They have never beaten an SEC team. They have yet in their school's history to beat a top 25 team. They, they will not be shook in this building. Quickly try to get it to spin up. Four point lead for UNCG. When we return, we'll go beyond the bucket. A little brainstorming with Jimmy Dykes. That's a lot of writing. He had to go through three Sharpies <laughs> just to get enough of it. We'll explain. One of the hardest things to get a young team to understand all the different ways you can impact winning as a player other than making a shot. A good exercise to do with your team, I've done it as a head coach, a lot of staffs do it across the country. Get your players in front of you, just start writing things down that they shout out, this is how I can affect winning. For a young team, they want to concentrate on that thing right there. Make a shot, but there's so many other things that impact winning, you can almost just cross that one off in front of them and say, guys, concentrate on the other things. That's what John Calipari is trying to get his guys to do right now. So then the question is, how you do it? Joe B. Hall in the building. You know where I first remember having a conversation about that whiteboard was with Coach Hall when I was an assistant here at Kentucky. He came by practice one day, and I just I remember in the conversation saying, we just can't make shots. And for about five minutes, he talked about all the other things that go into winning basketball games other than making a shot. And I've heard a lot of staffs over the years just go through that, that exercise, that brainstorm session to get their guys to visually see Good grief, there's a lot of things I can do other than worry about is my is my shot going in to yeah. win a game. And all those other 44 things I had on the board today, Kentucky better be really good at it or they could get lost in and, this ball. Looking. And John Calipari told his guys yesterday during practice, he, don't, the offense will be there. We, don't worry about the offense. Yep. Like we, we will beat teams with our offense, but if we lose in other categories, we will not win on the floor. No. And, and, and the schedule is, is not going to change. And you're looking at what Kentucky has coming up with – Louisville and the Kansas, but the SEC is no joke, and he knows it's no joke. They're averaging 85 points a game. He scored 90 last time out. Alonzo went spilling. He's guarded now by Ashton Hagens. Hagens denying. Shot clock at four. Miller has to go to the rim, and the loose ball is fought for, and it will go to Kentucky. Miller, though, has the ability to turn the corner against Kentucky. He's done it two or three times in this game. A very quick electric athlete. Actually played high school ball with Ashton Hagens for a year. And he's every bit the athlete that Hagens is, only a couple of inches shorter. Both at Newton High School, north of Atlanta. Ashton, this is hometown is Cartersville, Georgia. Here he is with the ball against the press. Right to P.J. Washington. The lob and the finish. So that's how you break a press, huh? Well, I said it earlier, Kentucky, they've, they, they've only had 14 plays this year against press offense and only eight shots out of those 14 plays. But trust me, they're so big, Tom, you can just hold the top of the press and they have that rim finisher just waiting on it. And a travel. Kentucky does a great job of getting the ball to the middle third of the floor right there to P.J. Washington, and then it's over. I mean, because the, the UNCG 1-2-2, two, two, the back line is lifted. They're above the free throw line extended. Those rim passes will be there all afternoon. Inside again, Montgomery. So at what point does the press become a bad idea for UNCG? Well, that, that, that's just a gut call for Wes Miller because that, that's who they are. Kentucky's got its first lead of the game and now looking to add to it. Kellen Johnson pushing. Here's Washington wide open. And he got the home touch. Five for Washington. Kentucky has opened up a four-point advantage. And they've done it thanks to transition offense. Quick break. Back in half a minute. CC on ESPN. From Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky, 10th ranked Cats. Now on an 8 0 run. Tom, watch this ball hit the dead spot of the rim. There's one on both sides right there. Right where that big part of the rim attaches to the backboard, that's the dead part of the rim. And it hits there and falls to the right as opposed to falling to the left. If it hits the actual ring, that thing's going to bounce out. 
that dead part, every now and then you'll see a shot get the right fall off of it. Alonzo got cut off. Great help defense by Reed Travis. Another UNCG turnover. That's a travel from Eric Hamilton. Well, Alonzo has the attention of Kentucky's defense. And you look at this team and grade them on synergy, talking about UNCG. That's the guy coming out of timeouts that scores at about a 60% rate when the ball leaves his hands, and Kentucky covered him up. Kentucky breaks the press again. At some point, it's like rear-ending a Maserati. That's an expensive bumper, yeah. and Kentucky taking advantage. And we talked to Wes Miller about that. You do what you do in this building and hope to gives you a chance to win. Yes. But to, as a coach, you also just you trust your gut. You're getting some feedback right now from your assistant coaches, and but that's as, as the head coach, you know your team, and you know what you're wanting out of your press right now. Free throws coming for Francis Alonzo, who is perfect from the floor, four for four. He has made all three of his three-point attempts. The magician from Malaga, out of Malaga, Spain. His, his form is as good as I've seen in college ball this year. Everything's lined up perfectly. The same routine, the elbows directly under the ball. It's as good of a form as you can teach. The hand placement, is not, there's not too much left hand on it. He gets it in the shot pocket and it's pure. 93% from the stripe coming in for a guy who's gotten better each and every year he's been on campus at Greensboro and a Kentucky turnover. I saw this team in the SoCon Championships mm -hmm. last year in Asheville in the semis in the title game. Spent some time with Francis the day of the title game. Hadn't seen him in, what, nine months? He's coming off the floor doing shoot around, stops and shakes my hand. Hey, how are you doing? Great to see you again. <laughs> That's great. Did he ask you directions to the locker room? <laughs> first trip ever. Were you wearing a blue blazer? Yeah, yeah, I kind of fit in. Shots blocked, his first miss. It was Hagen's who got a hand on it. And Kentucky with some hustle gets a takeaway. Alonzo got away with a push. And nothing doing on the first follow. Taken down by UNCG. You know what was unique about their shoot around last year? I was reminded of this before the game. They ran out of time with a shoot around before the championship game. So Wes, all the balls had to come off the floor. Wes Miller still went through three or four defensive sets and instead of a ball, they used a shoe. Wow. Alonzo, that, leaning uh, three, well, and he had something to say after. Uh, that, that's him. There, there is zero back down, not only from Francis Alonzo, but this entire team. Tyler Hero to the rack, and the freshman converts. I, I, I like him making plays off the bounce, Tyler Hero, for himself, and he also has the ability for others. That was just a blow-by, straight-line drive that you can't cover up at the rim. Well, and he's great when he gets to the line, right? Yes. Here's Dickey, working on Johnson, or pardon me, Washington. Hero had his hands on it, went down. John Calipari looking for a call, along with 20,000 in blue. They're going to go to what looks like what UNCG runs, their circle action with Hero on that baseline. Reed. Circle punch, they get a foul. And Travis got deep. It's the first on Eric Hamilton. The Spartans of UNCG hanging tight. It's a three-point Kentucky lead. I'm Jimmy. All right, Connor, thanks. Um, Jimmy, you know this guy? No. You should. No. He could teach you a thing or two. He needs to be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> he is the star. <laughs> he no. might be the only Kentucky fan that's not stressed out right now. No, he, that, he is not stressed out. Either that or he went beyond the stressed out breaking point. It's one or the other. Is He's it officially not? lost it? Yes, is that what you're saying? It's, it's one or the other. <laughs> Reed Travis hit the free throw line. Tom Kentucky talked about it earlier. They are getting 46% on the offensive glass. That leads the nation. So far in this game, they're at 60% on the offensive glass. And that, that's a number that UNCG cannot overcome to win this game. So six second chance points for Kentucky. It's a five point lead. Demetrius Troy guarded by Emmanuel quickly. 
The lob. And then it's another foul on a UNCG big. That's Eric Hamilton's second. Dickey's got two. Hamilton has two. West Miller tried to steal two. Now the timeout with a, the far corner rim run. And Quade actually did a very good job of seeing them both. Pressure again from UNCG. This time, man. Kentucky in their circle action. Action. They're using Quade Green on this possession, like UNCG uses Francis Alonso working off those baseline screens. Ball fake for Green, turns it into a two, and he beats the buzzer. I'm telling you, that was a very good job by Quade, because he made a couple of violent cuts, finally found himself open on the outside the three-point line, did not feel shot clock pressure with the ball fake and the easy two. He had four threes last time out against Monmouth. Alonzo not on the floor right now for the Spartans, trailing by seven. Troy, short, and Hamilton turns it into an and-one situation. Go back to Quade Green, Tom. He did a very good job of understanding what the shot clock was telling him. Sell the shot fake, step inside for a long two. And again, what we didn't see was the two or three hard cuts that Quade made to get himself open on that wing. Eric Hamilton at the free throw line, transferred to UNCG from Wichita State on those NCAA tournament teams, but he didn't play in a tournament game in his two years there. Originally from Atlanta. And a three-point play for Hamilton. He can be a wrecking ball for UNCG. Hamilton? Yeah. Yes. Getting, I mean, th think about it. He's getting seven points, and he's only playing 15 minutes a game. That's a guy getting a bucket every couple of minutes for you. Tyler Hero in the corner. And up high to get it was Karen Galloway. Tom Hero caught it and dropped the ball for no reason on his shot. Miller converts. One possession game. They're working with Tyler Hero on getting the shot off more quickly. Yes, yes. He, he, he has an unnecessary catch and drop of the ball before he raises it back up to shoot it. And Cal's trying to get that part out of his shot. Travis finds Montgomery. I think Montgomery is a kid that could carry Kentucky late February and into March for stretches and possibly in games because he is wired to score and he's a gravity four because he can pull his guy and the defense away from the rim with his ability to shoot it. Kenny Payne yesterday compared him to Sam Perkins. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I can see that. Yeah. Hero through traffic. Here's Travis. It was tipped and will stay with Kentucky. Over on ESPN later today, we've got a College Hoops doubleheader. First at 3.30 Eastern, Purdue faces off with Michigan. That's right, Big Ten play is already in action. Then Kansas plays host to Stanford at Allen Fieldhouse. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Jared Hass, the head coach at Stanford. Good friend of Wes Miller, who played at North Carolina when Jared was an assistant coach under Roy Williams. Jared going back to where he played at Kansas with that Stanford team. Then later tonight, Zion Williamson, the top-ranked recruiting class in the country, and Duke will be home against Stetson. This is circle action for Kentucky, it, or it's three high for UNCG. Same action, they just call it two different things. Dickey ends up with it after it was stripped away by Troy, and Troy will pass. finish it off. The vision of Francis Alonzo was outstanding. I mean, this is a 6'3 kid that plays the point for his FIBA Spanish national team. And his ability from the turnover, Tom, he knew he wasn't going to get to the rim. But watch this. When he gets his eyes up, as soon as that ball gets in the hands of another Spartan and gets in his hands, the vision, boom, right now, it's up. Boom. And that, I'm telling you, for him to, that was more of a feel than a see. He felt Demetrius Troy running as much as he saw him. Dude's a player. He's on the Lou Henson list for the mid-major player of the year. And they've got some scores in the SOCON now, right? I mean, we, our guy Bubba Parham, who we saw here, you got Fletcher McGee at Wofford. He's just 35 threes behind Steph Curry for the career SOCON record. And uh, Furman has two of the biggest wins in college basketball this season. Knocked off Loyola Chicago, Final Four team. 
and won against Villanova. Yes, the, the, the winner of that Southern Conference tournament, you're going to have to keep not one eye, but two eyes on in your bracket because there's two or three teams in there that are more than capable of going in as a 12 or 13 seed and winning the first round game. So and, we're, the, and we're looking at one of them right now. Right. And you have to win it because the SOCON was founded in 1921. They have never had an at-large team get into the NCAA tournament. Travis deliberately going to work. Spin move short. Tom, that was interesting because the entire bench of UNCG was hollering double. I don't know if the fans could hear it, but they weren't doubling. Right. It was just to give Reed Travis something to think about. Usually when you ask Stanford guys to think, they're pretty good about it. <laughs> yeah, he's very good about it. Ashton Hagens with the foul. UNCG hanging in. It's a two-point game. Conference is absolutely loaded. Yeah, Coach, you're exactly right. I, I think Fletcher McGee and Francis Alonzo, if they played 10 games of horse, it's going to be 5-5. Five to five. I think Alonzo is a little better, though, Coach, crafting us with a ball. We've got technical foul on Malik Massey, who shoved Ashton Hagens going to break after they got tied up. So we... We'll have Francis Alonzo shooting a free throw on one end for UNCG before they announce this to the crowd and explain it to him. Yeah, it's a dead ball. I, I thought it would be a dead ball contact technical foul on two blue Massey. Watch right here. And uh, Troy's trying to pull him away and watch Massey at the end. He just loses his composure, the shove, and he actually shoves Hagens, and Hagens' elbow hits the official. Yeah, got RB Clyburn right in the jaw. So Tyler here on the other side shooting the technicals. There's a, there's a major difference in not backing down and being stupid. Mm -hmm. and, and that was the that was the latter part of the sentence. Go to your bench. You've already proven you belong on this floor. Move on. Hero behind Travis. Wow, nice touch. You know, I'm, score. I'm, I'm telling you, his ability to make shots off the bounce is undervalued for this Kentucky team. Kentucky steals it right back. Hero got a little aggressive. And a corner three on the other side for UNCG. Hits every part of the rim, and it goes for Karen Galloway. He had 32 points against LSU, hit eight threes. Keldon Johnson in pain for Kentucky. And he is their warrior. He was yesterday in practice. His voice commands attention from his teammates, the ankle yeah, that ankle came down, just completely rolled over flat. And Tom, he, he's the one guy right now as a Kentucky player that is starting to call out other guys in practice, and they look at him when, when he talks, and they understand that I, 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 I better at least give a head nod that he's talking to me. And that dude there is all about winning. That was a major point of Kentucky's practice yesterday, communication among all players especially in transition defense. So will take Keldon all the way back to the locker room under the attention of head athletic trainer Chris Simmons. We've probably seen the last of Dickey in this half, wouldn't you think? Yes. He, he did come back and play for some extended minutes there with two fouls, but now, now you're, you know, you're, you're in good shape in this game. Stolen away. Massey takes it hard. Alonzo finds it, drifts out for a three, got fouled on the shot by Quad A Green. That is a scorer's mentality. He had it four feet away, Jimmy, and he took it to 21 feet. Yeah, he, he, I'm telling you, he's as good a guard as I've seen this year. I know that's a big statement because I was in the Bahamas with, with Virginia and Wisconsin with Trice. This kid could play for anyone at any level in college basketball. He leans in just enough. Calipari is saying, no, my guy went straight up and down. 
But this guy's going to get a lot of those calls. Big, broad shoulders. And think about this. The last two years, we have averaged 2,500 fouls called on a three-point shooter. Do we ever practice blocking three-point shots? No. No. Why do we continue to foul 2,500 times per year at the college game? John Calipari is probably asking something similar. It's ignorant. It's like living in Kentucky not knowing what a Dooley crew cab is. A what? Yeah. You know what it is. Alonzo missed the technical, uh, missed the uh, foul shot before the uh, technical, and he's got one more coming here. And he's got a chance to tie this game. You have to remember, I'm from Arkansas, and you're talking <laughs> Dooley crew caps. <laughs> I, I, it's what, just think big pickup just truck. Just keep on that's, going. That's I know how exactly you're going to get me the airport afterwards. Just, yes. just roll with me. Just say yes. yes. Isaiah Miller returns. He'll give Alonzo out for a moment. How long does he sit? Well, that depends on how how close this game stays. I mean, if Kentucky goes on a 6-0 run, boom. You got to get him right back in. He's trying to rest his legs a little bit because he worked so hard off the ball, cutting off those screens. Again, he makes violent cuts, and those guys can tire themselves out over a 40-minute game. Left short by Reed Travis. UNCG has a chance to reclaim the lead. Corner three. Off the back rim. And Tyler Hero ends up with it. Three on one. Green, the lob. Heads up. E.J. Montgomery with the dunk. Catch by a deuce. Troy with the answer, his first three of the game, and the Spartans with their best player on the bench for a moment back in front. I don't think there's any need for Kentucky to switch that easily. UNCG got that five-on-one switch they wanted. Five defender for Kentucky, can't come out and cover a three, and a huge, huge set-yourself-down basket from, for the Spartans. Ball knocked out of bounds off of Kentucky. Um, the, the, the building got hot off of this play right here by Hero with a throw ahead to Green and then Montgomery with the finish. But now watch the on-ball switch, boom, right here. Montgomery gets behind the three-point line, hands are down, not engaged, and you cannot do this against a veteran team like UNCG with a three-point shoot. Francis Alonzo has 19 points. He's on the bench right now, UNCG with a one-point lead. Look who's back in, Dickey. But that playing with two fouls it surprises me it surprises absolutely you. and Travis poked it away it will stay this way especially the stress Kentucky has put on him in the half court you can't check the monitor you know we're not we're not two minutes to go in the second half and Ron Calipari felt like it was it was off loose this is not what Dickey needs to be doing I don't know if it hit Reed's foot and then bounced out. What? How did you see it? I didn't see it. I was counting the number of TVs in here to gauge reaction of the Kentucky faithful. <laughs> Got more TVs than Jimmy Dyke's man cave. <laughs> Alonzo, a reach-in foul, and they have come alive in a negative way here at Rupp. John Calipari says, I don't know what to make of this, but I sternly disagree. He had to put his hands in his pocket to keep from being too animated. Well, back-to-back -back calls will do it for you. And I, I think these officials, though, they're, they're working their tail off. And head coaches have a little bit more patience with a crew that's hustling and working and closing down plays and, and, and not cutting their steps short from one end to the other. And this crew right now, Shea, Baker, and Clyburn, to me, they're giving the effort. And so John's respectfully saying, I think you've missed two in a row. Francis Alonso, impact player. The magician from Malaga. He's missed a couple of key free throws here this afternoon. Shot clock at nine. And the hook inside on Eric Hamilton, his third. There are ways to play post defense. If you play post defense like this this year, you will get whistled. Yes, it was a. He's a physical kid. Hamilton going to that bench. I, I think that's an, an impactful third foul because he's the he's the main backup minutes guy to Dickey, and Dickey's sitting over there with two. So, and we know the force that Kentucky has around the rim for the second half. 
Offensive board, shovel to Travis. Can't get that one to go. Isaiah Miller, full head of steam. Good grief. Are you kidding me? That was high, high level. Forget about I'm in a mid-major. I can blow by anyone on the floor speed. That was tremendous. Travis tried to slip. Hagens nearly threw it away. Shot clutch at six. Quickly, nowhere to go. Shot clock winding down. Green can't bail him out. And Kentucky looks lost in the half court. Yes, they do. Ten seconds in the half. UNCG will go to the locker room with a lead unless they cough it up. Miller gets by quickly. A uh, floater won't go. And that's how the half will end. UNCG withstood the one first half rally with the crowd into it that usually spells doom for the visitors here at Rupp. Francis Alonzo, 19 points in the first half. 19 of his team's 40. And it's UNCG with a three-point lead. Let's get to the studio. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, Chris Patola. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. The Spartans of UNCG received $90,000 and 100 tickets to come here to play this game. They have not been kind visitors. They lead 40 to 37. They're looking to cash all of those checks and more. Courtside, Tom Hart alongside Jimmy Dykes. We told you to begin with, Francis Alonzo would be the key to this game for UNC Greensboro, a guy you may not have heard of, but if you watch the first half, you know what a special player he is. He's the real deal, and UNCG is no joke. I, I said at the top that this feels like a four versus 13 opening day matchup, and it has lived up to that billing. This kid is so crafty with the ball, much more than a three-point shooter, but he is as good as I've seen this year in terms of how he shoots it every time. The former is terrific. He knows how to get separation. He's in, to me, he's a pro in the college game right now on this floor in terms of all the things he's doing. And how good is this back at Natty's Greens uh, Brewing Company in Greensboro? If this thing continues, that's the type of deal where you start hugging people you don't even know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. High five and hugging. I love you. I love you too. Go Spartans. That's what's going to go happening in that bar. That's a Natty Greens. You think it's a different feeling, say, at KS Bar here in Lexington right now? Most likely so. <laughs> Most likely. Yes. 19 points. The rest of his team has 21. Here at Rupp Arena, first ever visit for the Spartans to this place. They have never beaten an SEC team. UNCG has never won a game against a top 25 opponent. Even the folks at Rosebud's a little bit nervous about this one right now. 0-30 all-time against ranked opponents. And Kentucky has only lost at home four times in 135 games against unranked teams under John Calipari. Four um, times at 135. Yeah, yes. That's good news right there that three and white is back on the floor because we saw that ankle get completely rolled over. I think his value as a defender on Alonzo is as much as anything right now for Kentucky to have. And Alonzo is guarding Johnson. Kentucky quickly works it inside. Dickey playing with a couple of fouls came away with the block but couldn't get the ball. Ashton Hagens. Another miss. Reed Travis from point blank. Poked away by Hagens. It will stay with UNCG. Kentucky averages 31 free throw attempts per game. They only got there 11 times in the first half. So they're, they're really not tracking it all close to what they normally do. They're fifth in the country in percentage of points they get from the free throw line. Travis with the strip. Dickey misses. I don't like Hagens matched up on Alonzo. I don't think Hagens is engaged enough or disciplined enough to chase this kid and keep him from getting the ball and getting good looks. Jimmy, James Dickey, the shot blocking machine for UNCG, is not playing like he has two fouls. He has got another yeah, you're right. block in this half. He is being very aggressive. Is he the kind of guy that has to play that way? Yeah, yeah, otherwise he's not very good. You know, he's only, he's only shooting 46% from the floor and he takes his shots around the rim, but that's him right there. I mean, his fight and his will and his try level is really, really good. He circles the post as a 6'10 post defender, Tom. He's not content just to play from behind and use his length. 
Able to avoid the foul there somehow. Yeah. And Alonzo comes away with it. Very good defense by Dickey with foul trouble. To show his hands, move his feet, and get ball up top. Alonzo with the dump off, threw it away. Here's Kelvin Johnson. So Kentucky not getting to the free throw line. And shot just 47% from the floor in the first half. Only two of seven from three. Obviously, they're intent on getting it inside. Is that the solution to Kentucky's offensive woes? It should be to start the second half. I mean, Travis caught that thing so deep in the paint, the double team couldn't come quick enough to keep him from having an angle. Troy with the left hand. The tough kid, didn't he? About four assists per game. Kind of a pass first guy. He does struggle to defend. So it's interesting, they just keep him right now matched up to a shooter and says, don't leave Hero, because he's not good at guarding the bounce. Chases Hero around the screen, and it's ripped down by Galloway. UNCG leading by three. And Isaiah Miller with an air ball from the wing. A shot he didn't need to take early in the shot clock on the first side of the floor from a 32% three-point shooter. Hagens with the turnover and the travel. Sunday, 4 Eastern on ESPN2. We'll have top-ranked Notre Dame taking on number two UConn in the women's Jimmy V Classic in South Bend. This one could be an instant classic that you can also watch in the ESPN app from anywhere. In the last 10 years, Gino has eight losses to Muffet McGraw. He has a total of six losses to all the other head coaches he's faced. That is the best rivalry in women's college basketball right now. My concern for UConn, when I kind of looked at their numbers this week, they have very little depth. They're, the only close game they had this year was against St. John's. Their starters, Tom, played 40, 40, 40, 39, and 30 minutes. That's a concern for UConn going into that Notre Dame game. 121 consecutive regular season wins. Post foul, trying to go over the top is Eric Hamilton, and he has picked up his fourth. You mentioned that third with yeah. less than a minute to go in the first half was killer. Absolutely. And they have to come back in with a not near as physical post defender. I expect Kentucky, John Calipari, has sent the message, we're going to pound this thing around the rim to start the second half. He knows UNCG has foul trouble on their bigs. Go to work. And they finally get it. Touched everybody's hands. P.J. Washington with the follow. I'm waiting for P.J. Washington to decide, does he want to be a good college player or a dominant college player? Because right now, he settles too much for being just a good college player. Calvin Johnson comes out of there with it. Couple misses point blank for the Spartans. And Hero able to draw the foul on the drive. So Kentucky, after the foul on Alonzo, his first, by the way, to the free throw line here in the second half for the first time. And Dickey turned his ankle, it seems. And this is huge for UNCG. He's also on the Lou Henson list as the mid-major player of the year. Led the conference in blocks and rebounds last year. Meanwhile, Tyler Hero at the free throw line. You know, Tyler Perry and his staff, Tom, they, they looked at the same halftime stat sheet that you and I did. And you know they realize we're not getting to that line. So to start this second half, they're, they're going to throw that thing inside and they're going to drive the ball and, and get them being back what they are in their half-court offense, which is a power basketball team at the power part of the floor. They've taken James Dickey back to the UNCG locker room. See when he returns. Mohammed Abdul Salam is the post threat now. Can't and this guy shoot. is always a threat. You can't stand there and let him shoot. I mean, you can, but he's going to keep ringing up threes if you do. Yeah, you don't have to change your oil, but if you don't, your car will Not blow absolutely. up. Now Alonzo guarding Johnson on the other end. Stolen away by Isaiah Miller. UNCG. Oh, oh my, my goodness! 
It's a five-point lead with an exclamation point from Isaiah Miller. Reed Travis, the veteran, answers. <laughs> when their staff told me that Isaiah Miller is every bit, if not as good or better of an athlete than Hagens, I wrote it down. I said, I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> Check that one off as yes. You've seen the building getting impatient. Here's Hero. And they get Galloway for the foul. Isaiah Miller, full head of steam. And Isaiah Miller's in the game. His speed is at a different level than anyone else on the floor right now in Rupp Arena. A monster match by one in blue. Visit v.org slash donate. All donations benefit the V Foundation for Cancer Research. Many games, P.J. Washington will keep a cancer victim close to his mind. His grandma, Susie Tucker, a breast cancer battler and survivor. And typically, he wears the hot pink shoes in her honor. But he's gone a little bit more standard today. Just blue, Tyler Hero. This is the first. No matter what color they are, they're big. Well, and they need to be on the floor to close out this game and impact winning a hard game, which this is going to be. UNCG is not going to go away. They were grown man serious last night to their approach at 945 in the building when you and I are sitting here watching them practice. They were grown man serious warming up. There was no dancing. There were no headphones. They came here to ball and to win this game. And right now, they're in a great position to do it. All I have to say about that is good thing Tony's is open late. Here's Alonzo. He's been a magician. 22 points. Massey steps through off the window. Follow for Dickey, who just returned. And it's like he surprised everybody by coming out of the locker room. That is his first bucket of the game. And, and, and the undisciplined closeouts of, of Kentucky continue to rise up. That's where defending the basketball all starts, and Kentucky has to work at it. I'm glad you mentioned UNCG's business-like approach last night here at Rupp Arena. Wes Miller has never lost to Kentucky. There's Reed Travis with the jam. He was 3-0 against the Cats as a player at North Carolina, including an upset win. And there's a follow for Galloway. Galloway just outworked him. And the quick release by Francis Alonzo, that's just is the craftiness to know I'm bouncing, bam, how quick he got that ball out of his hands. But Jimmy, talking with Wes Miller last night, this is a coach and a team that expected to compete. They would not be surprised by having a second-half lead against not Kentucky. Not at all. Mm -hmm. And so, therefore, there shouldn't be any butterflies the rest of the way. This kid's a problem. Miller left Hagens, who is slow to get to his feet. This kid is a problem. Not only did he get to the rim and finish, he said a little something to Hagens. These two guys played high school ball together, but there is zero back down from Isaiah Miller in this building. Keldon Johnson is able to draw the foul. Might be Alonzo's second. It is. And it'll be Johnson at the free throw line. Wes Miller, two-time SoCon Coach of the Year, 3-0 as a player. First time he's led a team against Kentucky. UNCG is the only head coaching job he's ever had. He was the youngest head coach in Division I when he got the job. He still looks baby-faced, but he's already in his eighth season at Greensboro. Yeah, he's a co competitive dude, though. Don't let that, uh, that look fool you because I, I think he expects his team to win this game. I just kind of got that feeling, you and I did talking to him last night, that they would be very disappointed like they were last year after the Gonzaga loss. He said, that thing still eats at our soul. Well, and I think a comparison to make in terms of expectations as UNCG turns it over. No, we get a foul. Pardon me. It's on P.J. Washington, and it's his third. Wes Miller in a game here in 05 guarded Rajon Rondo. Here's the foul. Well, that's where they called the foul, but there was no foul. What did the defender do wrong? P.J. Washington is just on his side following him up the side of the floor and you're right that, that, that's where they called the foul yes but that's not where the foul occurred because there was no foul
He can Miller, go by crossover. anytime he wants, Tom. He can go by anyone in this building. You, me, anyone John Calipari puts on the floor. Number one in blue can go by anyone in this building. Now UNCG's bigs are involved. Abdul Salam has his first bucket. Dickey has his. And Dickey gets wrestled for the foul. That is costly. It's his third. Reed Travis is a drive threat. And on the other end, one in blue is a drive threat. I mean, his first two steps with that ball, bam, bam. He covers 10, 12 feet now as quick as anyone in the college game. And a great rim decision by him to see the size was attracted and the easy drop off. Big foul on Dickey, huh? Yes. He'll have to take a seat here with 12.53 to go. He only has one bucket, but he has been a defensive influence. I go back to that whiteboard conversation we had in the first half. And for Kentucky right now, there's so many things that this young team's going to have to grasp other than, is my shot going in? Are they going to sit in the stands? Are they going to talk early, loud, and constant? Are they going to box off? Are they going to do all the things you have to do to win a hard game? Alonzo, two ball fakes, but he left the three short. And officials will confer. It'll stay this direction. If they turn it over, this building's going to explode. So now this Kentucky team on the floor is worried about Francis Alonzo. They're worried about UNCG, and they're all also worried about the refs. Yes. Here's that's Alonzo. A, that's a lot to worry about. Yes. I, I just don't know about Hagen's on Alonzo. Ripped away Woo! by Keldon Johnson. Man, great description by you, because it was a grown man rip. Like he took a shot to right above the eye on that rebound. Oh my gosh, Nick Richards just laid out Francis Alonzo. And sophomore Nick Richards gets whistled for the foul. He hadn't been on the floor much tonight. Well, he laid the wood now to Alonzo to sprint up ball screen, but he's still moving. He doesn't leave any room at all for a blind screen to be set. And just cold cocks Francis Alonzo. Alonzo out of the game for a moment. He's not sure if he's in Spain or <laughs> Ruck. You know what I'm saying? Shake it out. You'll be fine. Galloway's a shot threat now off a of pick and pop. Richards with the swat. He had three blocks in nine minutes last game. Oh, and he was poised for the jam, but a Kentucky turnover. We have a heavyweight battle on our hands. UNCG leads Kentucky by two. Number one versus number two. Maybe you didn't expect this. A classic with unranked UNCG coming into Rupp Arena and giving the 10th ranked Wildcats all they can handle. John Calipari has only lost four home games against unranked opponents as a Kentucky head coach in 135 games. UNCG leads by two. Their leading scorer, Francis Alonzo, still on the bench for a moment. How well can Kentucky guard the ball this last 11 minutes and 30 seconds? Dickey tried to go through Travis, got cut About off. Three seconds. And a UNCG turnover. Um, you're a nice high guy Tuesday night at Missouri. Nate Pierre-Louis from uh, Temple. Yep. Phenomenal at guarding the ball and staying in front of the ball. I look at Bryce Brown from Auburn. I think he's one of the best guards in the SEC at just guarding the ball. Xavier Simpson at Michigan. That, that's what Kentucky doesn't have right now. Just a, I'm going to stay in front of you, stay solid. The ball's not going to get put in a rotation on our defense. And uh, that's going to be tested severely in the last 11 minutes. James Dickey on the floor, playing with three fouls. Corner three off the kick, and that one's too strong. Kentucky still struggling from deep, and they lost it inside. Slipped out of the hands of E.J. Montgomery.
Not, not, not a lot of offense on the floor right now for the Spartans. Troy's been good on penetration. Shot clock at eight. Massey, a lot of movement, but going nowhere. And an air ball. Dickey finds a shot clock at one. And here comes Ashton Hagens. Hagens all the way down the paint. And it goes! A chance for a three-point play! And if that's on Dickey, it's his fourth. Well, the, 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 the crossover momentum dribble is what got him to the rim. He, he went from 90 miles an hour to 100 miles per hour with a crossover boom. A big play. Not only a momentum basket, but a critical foul on Dickey. It wasn't on Dickey. It, it was on, on Troy. After all that, it's the second on Demetrius Troy. So the freshman, Ashton Hagens, who skipped his senior year of high school, enrolled early here at Kentucky, reclassified. Originally committed to Mark Fox in Georgia. When Fox was let go, Hagens reopened his recruitment. Kentucky with the lead now. First time since it was 37-35. And Alonzo back in the ball game for the Spartans. Nearly turned it over after taking a bump from Hagens. Hagens is blanketing Alonzo. Troy with the floater. UNCG back in front. Just one on one. Just one on one. I'm going to get the ball to the paint. Strong, tough baskets, body blows. What those are to your defense. Hero steps into the shot. And Troy lets it carry out of bounds. Tom Hero has to start making threes at a higher rate. 31% on the year coming in. And this is a team that they, they, they get him open. They get him good looks. He has tremendous explosiveness into his jump shot. But that thing needs to start going in for Kentucky. And right now with 9.40 to go in the game would be a good time for him to knock down a couple. And Jimmy, I think a good time to remind people just how good UNCG is. They won the SoCon last year, regular season and tournament thanks to Alonzo hitting a game-winning three against Wofford in the semis and they gave Gonzaga all they could handle yeah. in the NCAA tournament yeah and, and I thought it told a lot about this team last night when we talked to Wes Miller about that Gonzaga loss he paused for about 10 seconds and said it still burns in our gut and that's a sign of a bunch of competitive dudes Alonzo after the offensive rebound gets fouled on the drive they will not count the bucket it was interesting talking to Wes Miller about that great season last year, the best in school history. They won on the road at NC State. They won the SoCon tournament. They got back to the NCAAs for the third time ever. And he said at the end, we lost to Gonzaga. We yeah. lost. Yeah. And that's what we remembered from the season, yep. losing. And that is a competitor and a grinder. And that's it. Back to the three high offense that we drew up to start the game for Alonzo. Just Continually look at him working off streams. Hagen's doing a good job of locking and trailing him everywhere he goes. And so a drive, and it's slotted away by Tyler Hero. Shot clock is at two. And a step on the sideline by Malik Massey. Defense saves it for Kentucky. Great urgency by Tyler Hero as a weak side defender. He wasn't a dead weak side defender. He was an action help weak side defender. And when the blow-by occurred, he came sailing in and erased what looked like was going to be an automatic two. Francis Alonzo leaves the game for the moment for UNCG. A lot of young guys, Tom, they'll, they'll say, Coach, I'm in help. Yeah, but it was dead help. you got to be in help and be in action help. That's what Hero was. Kentucky has lifted their offense. A drive opportunity or a slip could be in the works. Travis steps back, thought about the three, takes it down the lane instead. Yeah, you saw it coming. John Calipari in front of his bench lifted the entire offense and kind of threw a naked pick and pop back to Reed Travis in space. Capitalized very well. Travis with a game high 22. Galloway, three feet high. Here's Hero. And Kentucky will run the set. Reed Travis has been their main offensive threat today. Washington bullies his way into the paint. 
the ones you got to make. I'm, I'm just telling you, that, those are the ones you have to make in this game and if you're going to be in the top two or three in the SEC this year. Remember, Alonzo on the bench. Who do you go to? Shot clock winding. Hit the rim. And the loose ball is taken by Keldon Johnson. We get a foul on the floor on Dickey. Carmi on Hamilton. It's his fifth. He is done. Reed Travis is just getting going. Well, he caught it on kind of a naked pop, completely uncovered with a five-out motion and the hard drive. On ABC, trailing by six. All right, Connor, thanks. Catch Sports Center later tonight on ESPN after the Mountain West Championship game with Kenny Mayne and Michael Leaves. They'll have all the highlights, post-game coverage, and reactions from Championship Saturday, plus which team played their way into the college football playoff. And today's best from the gridiron, Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Eric Hamilton, the transfer from Wichita State, has fouled out of this game after the loose ball scramble. And with the results of that play, Kelvin Johnson goes to the free throw line for Kentucky. I'm talking about the number one team possibly on the ropes right now. When, when I just look at the big picture, I see seven, eight teams, Gonzaga, Duke, Kansas, Virginia, Auburn, Tennessee, Kansas State, that really say they're, they're, they're built to not only get there, but they could possibly win it. I would throw Syracuse, Michigan, and Wisconsin in that group as well. And it's been only three times since 1985 that a team that started outside the top 25 went and won the national championship. Wisconsin is a threat to do that this year. They are no joke. They opened Big Ten play last night. That's right, Big Ten play has already started by winning on the road against a very good Iowa team. Fran McCaffrey, the head coach there, he took UNCG to the NCAA tournament when he was the head coach of the Spartans. Here's Isaiah Miller with the crossover. And the rebound finds the hands of P.J. Washington. Emmanuel quickly. Kentucky with a tenuous three-point advantage. Yeah, and a big-time mismatch with P.J. Washington. If you were post up, he's got a six-footer on him. Reed Travis is directing traffic. Yeah. P.J. needs to direct traffic. Demand the ball. You've got a six-foot guard on you. Hero lost it for a moment. Whips it over to Look Calvin out. Jackson. Well, there's an example of one guy who is willing to take the lead. Yes, he is the alpha dog on this team. Careful, careful, Dickey. Playing with three fouls, picks up his dribble. Still no Alonzo on the floor. He's waiting to check in. Dickey commits his fourth. Boy, Tyler Hero was really good defensively, blowing up the dribble handoff action on that last possession. And then the, the, the pass by Hero to Keldon Johnson and then the seal off by Reed Travis, just opening up a hole like Alabama's going to run through tonight against Georgia in the SEC Championship football Whoa. game. That big seal off Whoa. by Reed Travis as a like a tight end, cutting back inside on a linebacker pretty sturdy limb you're going out on there. I mean, they're two touchdown favorites. Six nothing Kentucky run. P.J. Washington to the free throw line. Preseason second team all conference. Number 12 overall prospect last year. McDonald's All-American. 36 and a half inch vertical leap. This is a guy that has the ability to take over games. Yes, but, but he cannot be on cool duty. I mean, he's got to play with that same Kelvin Johnson type motor. That's cool. Back-to-back that's back cool. jams for Johnson. The lead is seven. West has three timeouts left, and he's going to play through this possession. A little bit of a gamble. Hero cuts off Alonzo, but with the bump, commits his third. You know what I like about Tyler Hero? He has a little bit of a gambler's mentality about him on defense. He wants to make a play. He's a shoot-gap guy. That sometimes John Calipari says, you know what, we, we need more of that type of toughness and mentality on the defensive end. He's been good in this game. He has not been exposed defensively at all. Wes Miller uses a timeout. 
Kentucky on an eight nothing run thanks to Keldon Johnson. Yeah, his, his motor now resonates and he is making plays out of the corner, not just shots out of the corner. And Reed Travis once again involved with a seal off. Couple of jams for Keldon Johnson, but pay attention to the dirty work that Reed Travis is doing. Yeah, we, we talked in the first half about do something other than make a shot. How about own your spot? Reed Travis just seals someone off and he owns his spot. Look right here at the top, number 16. You can help win ball games if you own your spot. And that's exactly what Reed Travis has done for his team on those last two dunks by Keldon Johnson. A whiteboard you explained early in the game, all the things you can do to help impact the yes. game and make a shot is just one of them. Yes. Alonzo steps back. Dickey will take it himself. Nice move. Well, they, they like Dickey driving to the side of a shooter. That time it was a Troy posted up in the far corner. He can't help off, and he has that long extension. It was a much-needed basket. What happened last time that Cal lifted his offense? Reed Travis drove the ball. He might be trying to work back to that spot again. Shot clock is at 7. P.J. Washington tried to go between his legs. Ends up getting tied up, and the ball will belong to UNCG. P.J. Washington is the key to this team. Going forward, that's the key to the team. Can he make winning plays in hard ball games? We're going to get a little bit of an example of it here with just under five to go. All right, so down five. How quickly can they get a good look for number 10, Francis Alonzo? He is hiding in the far left corner. He'll be at the top of your screen in a moment. It may be an elbow series with Dickey driving the ball again, now with Alonzo in that far corner. There it is, off the curl. Two jumped out on him, tried to drive. Kelly Johnson took it away. Johnson has it taken away by Isaiah Miller. On the run, Alonzo had a triple team. Tyler Hero finds it. Alonzo the only man back, and Hero finishes. Back and forth affair, Kentucky leads by seven. Alonzo hangs, can't hit, took a bump, and ended up on the floor. Kentucky is making Francis Alonzo work. Yeah, they, they've gotten after him in the second half. Tom, you're exactly right. Because he had 19 in the first half, and he only has three right now in the second half. Hero, baseline, yeah. got it. Dude's a player. John Calipari, the tap on the backside. Tyler Hero playing with a very good speed for a true freshman in this game that you could easily get sped up because of the energy in the building. The Tyler Hero has made plays defensively. He's made plays as a passer. He's handled it well in transition. And the last tough two right here was to perfection. Hey, gentlemen, thank you. I just wish Seth loved college basketball. He'll love these two games, College Hoops doubleheader later today. 3.30 Eastern, Purdue faces off with Michigan on ESPN. And then Kansas plays host to Stanford at Allen Fieldhouse. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. You can watch anywhere. Bill Self not happy with his offense right now, saying it's not fluid enough, and he took the blame for it. He'll figure it out. Hall of Fame coach. And Duke tonight, you'll get to see how many guys in college basketball, I talked about on Sports Center prior to this game, can you just say their first name and everybody knows who you're talking about? There's one, Zion. Well, I thought you were going to say Tom. You're talking about players. I get it. Y yes. If, if, if I expanded it outside of players, then <laughs> there's only one Tom. <laughs> Here's that in the corner three for Massey. And Washington has it taken oh, away man. by the six-foot Isaiah Miller. It was a huge Valentine by Massey. Uh, to me, that was kind of a must-get. Because if Kentucky gets that ball and comes down and works the clock right now, UNCG's running out of time. Kelvin Johnson working inside. Here's P.J. Washington. 
Behind the back and off the window. Okay, I, I called him out about a minute ago. Can he make hard plays in hard games? And he just answered the bell right there. B.J. Washington can be a dominant college basketball player. He has the size. He has the skill level. He has the explosiveness around the rim. He just has to make up his mind, do I want to be that or do I just want to be an okay, pretty good college basketball player? That's on 25 in white. John Calipari and his staff have done all they can do to put him in that spot. Now he has to take that next step, Tom. Tested the NBA waters. In fact, he and Travis Reed worked out against each other for Minnesota early in the summer. They went one-on-one -on -one and bang, without knowing that they're going to end up being teammates here at Kentucky. Cal has kept his offense lifted a big part of this second half. And what's done, it's allowed driving opportunities, it's allowed some slips, it's allowed those dunks at the rim, moving the big out from UNCG. Reed Travis got really deep. That, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. Dickey was just sitting there waiting on it, and Travis just had a kind of a nonchalant turn to the left shoulder. He, but, not, but he's not an above-the-rim guy. This is a good example of it. He struggles scoring over length, and Dickey is exactly that. Dickey with the block. Remember, he's playing with four fouls. UNCG trails by nine to number 10, Kentucky. But 2.19 to go, and you got a shooter like Francis Alonzo. This game is far from over. UNCG's only loss this season came on the road to LSU in overtime. They're the winningest team this season in the state of North Carolina, but they have never beaten a top 25 opponent. 0-30 oh, against ranked opponents. I, I was really anxious to see how Kentucky was going to respond today because after the beatdown by Duke, they've beaten teams in rut that they're supposed to beat. But this is a legitimate NCAA tournament team in UNC Greensboro. I'm not so sure the trip to the Bahamas did more harm than good because of all the noise coming out of that trip. Kentucky's the best team in the nation, and they, they have you know the best freshman in the nation, and Reed Travis the most impact. I think there's a lot of noise for them to work through, but I think they now have shut that noise out and realized we got work to do, and it has showed up in this ball game. Tyler Hero beat the shot clock, largest lead of the game for Kentucky, up a dozen. Another thing about the Bahamas trip. Duke went to Canada a week later. Those are the only two teams anybody saw yes. on television in the summer. That's a great that's a great call by you. But you go back and look at Kentucky in the Bahamas, their lack of guarding the ball was exposed very, very much so. Tom, watch Tyler Hero talking about him getting that shot off quicker. He's gonna pop out, work off, boom, up and out. He doesn't drop the ball nearly as much as he has been, and that's something that Cal continues to drive on him every day. You're going to get open shots, but in our league, it's got to be boom, in and out in less than a second. Washington. Yep. Why? Like, why? It's his fourth. Can Kentucky be an elite team this year without significant offensive contributions from P.J. Washington? No, no. I, I, I keep saying it, that he has to decide how good does he want to be. And, and to me, you judge... What do you do in hard games? I think he has showed up well today in a hard game in a couple of stretches, but he's also made some plays that make you question. This is going to be looked at as an elbow, and he raises this thing up. Now, that, yeah, that's an F1. The elbow, the arm isn't vertical. It's extended out, and that's exactly why we have the rule in place. He comes across. That's an F1 with free throws and the ball now to UNCG. And the way, the way you see that is regardless of whether or not Dickey was within the cylinder. I do because of, of the position of, of uh, PJ's elbows. Yes. The elbows weren't straight up and down coming across with a normal basketball move. He got that elbow out, and that's what they always look for. The initial call was on PJ, correct? Yes, correct. Brian Shea, Jason Baker, and R.B. Kleiber in the officiating crew. On the way I understand it, if he's holding that basketball and bringing it from side to side, and his elbows are more underneath the ball, more of a basketball play, he's fine. But you get him out like that.
Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I thought. That, that's an F1. And uh, they're probably looking to see about the defender in, this, in the cylinder. But that, dis that dis defender was in a legal guarding position. And regardless, the elbows came through in an unorganized fashion. And the best way to explain it to the viewers at home, if the elbows are under the ball, like vertically going up from the floor, they're fine. But those things are spread out to the side. And he clips Dickey with an F1. That's, that's a big call. John Calipari was not happy with Hero and the lack of urgency he had coming to get the ball off the dribble handoff. Kind of put P.J. in a bad spot. But now you've, you've cracked the door just a little bit for UNCG to fight their way back. James Dickey at the free throw line. Only 48% on the season. So if you're going to F1 someone, 21's the guy to do it. Is that a he, verb, he, to he, F1 he somebody? Does, he, does, he does struggle. Notice, watch his eyes. He closes his eyes, visualizing this ball going in. Just trying to find what works for him. Bless his heart as a 48% free throw shooter. Heard of a lot of shot doctors coming up with weird things. I've never heard of closing your eyes helping. At some point, you have to open them. You know? <laughs> eventually. Yeah. You got to go quick now. It's, you, can't, you can't play around with this thing. Alonzo off of a screen or a hard drive, but you got to go quick. Alonzo offers the screen, steps back. Dickey couldn't get it to him clean. He's in his range from there. Working on Travis. Off of one foot. Hero is able to save it. So if UNCG isn't able to come back, and the folks at Natty Greens don't get that win that they're looking for tonight, um, they are still very, very well built to survive the SOCON, which is uh, having as great a non-conference maybe as they've ever had in yes. its current iteration. A absolutely right. I would not be surprised at all to see UNCG pop up in that bracket on Selection Sunday around a 13 seed. Whoever comes out of that league, keep your eye on. But they are more than capable of winning that first round game. James Dickey fouled out. Wes Miller knew that foul trouble for his bigs would be an issue today, and both of them have fouled out. You know what? Good, good teams and good players, they get better during the game. Remember the first half when Reed Travis got switched out on Alonzo and he was deep in the three-point, got buried, they took advantage of it. Well, in the second half, Kentucky has grown up. They've gotten better defensively within the game, and that's what great teams and, and really good players do. They don't wait till the next day watching the film. They can fix the problem within the game. Kentucky fixed the problem covering up Francis Alonzo while the game was going on. I thought you did a good job fixing a lot of your first half problems. Yeah, there's a lot to fix if you go back and watch this film. <laughs> Our biggest problem is getting you to the airport yes, in my dually cab that's waiting out front. <laughs> I hope you change the oil. Here's Demetrius Troy. Good win for Kentucky. They've got Seton Hall next. They've got Utah in a couple of weeks. As always, they've got a tough non-conference schedule. And they got a real test from UNCG this afternoon. Keldon Johnson tied up. And we've got a jump ball with 10 seconds left in the shot clock. I think John Calipari will be happy in general with his team's performance today because they got a stern test from a really good team although he may still have an issue with motivating some individual players nick richards barely played tonight yeah. today they just, just did not produce pj washington he did, did. in the double figures tyler heroes tied his career high in his freshman season with 18. john calipari continues to say you got to get off quicker but he's also saying don't even think about it like i trust your release more than you trust your release right now. If you're preparing for Kentucky, Tom, don't look at Tyler Hero's three-point percentage on the year. He is much, much better than what the 31% said he was coming into today's game. That number's going to rise a little, but the form looks to me more like a 40, 42% three-point shoot. 6'5", freshman out of Milwaukee. After trailing by five, Kentucky has closed on a 28-6 run. <laughs> Keldon Johnson, of course, another board. 10-0 run for Kentucky to close this thing out. 
And the Cats are going to see the record go to 7-1. and one. Thomas, the best Kentucky's played all year. And they had to do it. So the Cats dribble it out on this Saturday afternoon. Once again, our final, Kentucky 78, UNCG 61. Coming up next on ESPN2, Big Five battle, Villanova in the palestra to take on LaSalle. For Jimmy Dykes, our sensational crew, I'm Tom Hart. Let's get you to the studio. Chris Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and Chris Patola. Gentlemen.